So are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. OK, so we'll start with the couplets and then we'll get into the fourth uh, sonnet. I mean, the fifth one. Uh, yes. Babaji, you want to read the uh, ah, three couplets? Please. OK. Thank you. Altar Mehr Baba Ki Jai. The three of Mehr Baba's favorite couplets of Hafiz, a mystical Persian poet. Befitting a fortunate slave, carry out every command of the master without any question of why and what. About what you hear from the master, never say it is wrong. Because, my dear, the fault lies in your own incapacity to understand him. I am slave of the master who has released me from ignorance. Whatever my master does is of the highest benefit to all concerned. Hafiz, Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. So I think, uh, as I was saying uh, before we started, uh, I did catch up with uh, our read of yesterday. Beautiful, Mama. Thank you so much. Uh, and and I, I think uh, uh, my first reactions on the part one of book five is he you know hammers in this message of what is true art right so he's just hammering in that message with examples where art without divinity or focus on some aspects of divinity or in praise of lord is actually not art at all which to say the least is provocative because human art has been neutral, has been a secular, has been uh, targeted at various things. And uh, uh, the, the period that he attacks the most is the most celebrated period for art, right? So the, the, the towering personalities that he attacks are against the most uh, respected people in art. So obviously uh, there is a deep message for us as Baba lovers uh, there. I think uh, it is for us to reflect and see that the true nature of any anything that we do uh, should be the object. The object of anything that we do should be going back towards God, right? And that that if you look at it, that is the larger theme of stay with God itself. Stay with God, right? So every aspect, every breath, every thing that we do be it art or otherwise, we'll have to bring more of Baba into it. And I think that's the dominant message I took away. Uh, like you all discussed, there are quite a few uh, esoteric or uh, specific examples which uh, we may not be aware of unless you know those pieces of uh, literature or those pieces of history or in some cases like the Buddhist examples, even the mythology and the, uh, uh, you know, the story surrounding uh, that avatar. Uh, the only thing that we could do is uh, briefly look at the notes. So I think Mawaji, we missed the notes. Uh -huh. So yeah, okay. so we'll just quickly see what uh, anything uh, that jumps up from what I uh, missed. So yeah, uh, there was Picasso. I'm sure we uh, mentioned that. Ares, the, uh, the Greek god of war, I think went to, uh, he, he was trying to pair it with somebody else. Then Eliot is just an artist, I mean, a poet. And Obe is actually a French playwright. So uh, that comes up as a name. I was not sure what's going on. Again, a uh, English playwright, Obe and Fry are so difficult to catch if you don't know that they are actually people and not just the words themselves, right? And I Khan, uh, Kama, you were spot on, Inayat you know, Khan, and uh, your description of him was uh, perfect. He is the one that, I mean, uh, you must be, uh, if you people haven't seen it on, uh, let me just bring it up. Uh, he was suggesting we should look it up on. Uh, um, Wikipedia, and we can, right? He was, as he said, 
a musician as well. Yeah, so that's him on the right. And uh, Hazrat is just teacher, right? So, and look at this. He was an exponent of the Saraswati Veena. There are photographs of him with that. I hope there is something here. So there's a good collection at the Sufi centers of photographs of uh, Inad Khan. But he died in 1926. So this, was, this was all uh, before... Uh, uh Sufism reoriented and uh you know it, it all started with the next uh, uh person in the order right uh who is what uh uh Kama, who who's the next one that took over from Inayat Khan before Deuce anyway it doesn't matter uh, so we know the line from that point on, and uh, it's just a reference that I wanted to make. So that's icon. The other thing, probably if I can just make a point, I think I found that imagery of uh, music being singular and from the soul to God to be very powerful compared to that orchestra. So he just beats up this orchestra model, right? Where there are 100 voices and 100 people uh, bawling away is the word he uses to 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 God versus uh, uh, art is personal. It's one message. It's one instrument, right? A single instrument, and that's the contrast he makes. So that was beautiful. Master Kung is a Confucian uh, a period. Uh, 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 I mean, Master Kung is Confucius, right? So uh, see translations of his work. Lao Tse. So these two are. Uh, Buddhist uh, 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 masters, I should say, or uh, people who created variants of uh, uh, Buddhism, which got a lot of support, right? Lao Tse Tung and uh, Confucius, uh, the two mentioned here. And then here, John is St. John of the Cross. And uh, no guru, no sishya is a reference to Nirvana Shatakam. Nirvana Shatakam of uh, Shankaracharya, where he says, I am neither the teacher nor pupil. So that's a verbatim uh, a lift, for, I mean, uh, quotation from that. Yeah, so I think that is what I just wanted to quickly kind of also add to and not miss the notes. Uh, uh, just, uh, if, yeah. if I would like to add another point here, yesterday Please. we had that. Uh, uh, the episode of uh, 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 person going to water <clears throat> and not uh, so this is a story of Narada and Krishna. Uh -huh. So it is very well explained. Uh, is a typical story in Bhagavata where uh, mm -hmm. uh, Narada who is uh, beyond all the duality and he is a realized soul true and true. Mm -hmm. Feels like experiencing Maya once. So he asks Krishna, What is this Maya? I don't understand uh, what you all uh, or people say about um, uh, all the difficulties and other things. Hmm? Then Krishna uh, gives him an experience of Maya. That is that story. He asks him to bring some water, and while he goes there, he sees a and some lady, then a girl, and then uh, gets into the clutches of this reality, goes to their place, and then gets married to her and all that. So this is a story from Bhagavata. And maybe there is another similar anecdote from Buddhism also, as Ravi uh, told yesterday. Wow. Very good. So yesterday I just uh, uh, touched upon that and then found that what I told was correct. Very good. All right. Any other uh, points before we get started with uh, or continue with our journey? Uh, Jai Baba, uh, the, the question uh, you were asking about after Nayakan was Rabia Martin. And Rabia Martin. Martin uh, was the 
who recognized uh, Meher Baba, Baba. As, uh, Baba that uh, you know as the teacher that they need to follow. And unfortunately, she had cancer and she couldn't meet Baba, but she had met uh, Elizabeth Patterson and Marina. And then mm. she had appointed uh, Ivy Deuce as the next uh, head. And that's how Ivy Deuce and her daughter Charmaine came Charmaine. to meet. So and, and then after and, that, what, what what was the lineage after Deuce? So Deuce appointed. Uh, so uh, and then this guy called Doctor, whatever his name is, you know, uh, I forget. He had been to India. He was one of the first guys. I mean, they, he came with a group of people in nineties, and uh, they focused on the Bairamangala, uh, you know, center. And uh, after that, uh, I forget his name, you know, uh, he's on their website. They've started uh, actually now producing some videos and YouTube channels. And then now uh, the lady. After, after that, it's Connor, yeah. Uh, after that was Connor, Connor, Mushira Connor, yeah. And also, by the way, the word Rabia Martin. Now, Rabia is an 8th to 10th century Sufi. Uh, you know, I think she even was, perfect master, yeah. I mean, it's, no, no, no. Actually, it is uh, considered that Hasrat Baba Jan is the reincarnation. He is the reincarnation of uh, Rabia, correct? Uh, Rabia yeah. is a queen. Is a queen, correct? No, no, no. Rabia was actually uh, what do you call? Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say prostitute, but she was a very highly. It's a very uh, amazing story about her. Yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, so that's uh, that's the uh, background behind the name Rapi, actually. Uh, I just brought up uh, uh, Wikipedia on Rabia. Thank you. It is it is not it's not she was not a queen. She was a mystic and she was a, a, a saint as well. And I think uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's Hajrat Baba, uh, Hajrat Baba Jan's original name was also Rabia. Oh, okay, 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 cool. So let's get uh, started. We start from uh, five, which is on page one hundred eight. The next notes is on one ten. Please let me know. So as as you guys did yesterday and the day uh, before last week. These are very intense, but very specific. So unless there's something very uh, important that we need to discuss or new ideas that we are able to get out of this, you know, we'll just keep going uh, and, and seeing how it links to us uh, in a quick fashion. Yeah. OK, Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. So that Aphrodite of one shall not go on for the rest of one's life making a damn fool of herself, bed romping with Aries, the blusterer. But divine Jesus was tougher than Muhammad and his commentators, or than Master Kung, now we know Kung is Confucius, and said that there is only one thing you need to know, and that is, I am the way, and here haven't got Buckley's chance of getting to God except through me. So you'd better leave your poor old mother and father and kid sister and your old oil and steel mill empires and tag along. And as Kizer said to Moses, don't ask no fool questions of me because I am a busy man. But just be handy in case I get the whim to give you a whack over the head and let some daylight into your thick skull. Or in my utter kindness, plunge you into terrible remorse as I did my beloved Peter. So everything from here is as though Jesus said it and as though Jesus said it in, I think, heavily influenced Australian, right? So all of these may be Australian uh, usages, Buckley's chance of getting to God. And then he gives a biblical example of Kizer and uh, Moses and also Peter, right? But this he's introduced whim in capital. So 
it's obviously a reference to mow the most original web not just random right so don't ask no foolish fool questions of me because i am a busy man this is christ speaking but just be handy in case i get the whim so he says if if i get the whim be around right if i get the most original whim so that starts the entire process so be around is what i think he's suggesting here right books books a weariness to the flesh as solomon said dead Such meat yes sanjay saying something yeah yeah stick around with me be around stick me around. Hey, so ah that's even better i i, I may i may give you i may give you what you need realization correct. Yeah. correct yeah yeah perfect correct. that's the more relevant meaning correct i continue books books a weariness to the flesh as solomon said dead meat riddled with maggots by the time they are off the press and unless one has the transforming breath of a jesus but then one don't need them excellent guides until you find the way said abu said after he had buried his a book is a book when it contains the name of god there have been 84000 prophets and each one left a book and each book contained one thought, one word god said abul fadl to the young seeker god speaks he says is a book of a book the book of this age written by god to appease the intellectual convulsions of the mind of men for as its author states to understand the infinite eternal reality is not the goal of individualized beings in the illusion of creation reality is to be realized by conscious experience brilliant brilliant uh, introduction or reemphasis on the important importance of uh, god speaks right so let's mark that out before we forget yeah so the other thing here he says so again very beautiful uh, usage, usage of words so he says dead meat riddled with maggots is what books become by the time they come out of press and then he says and unless one has the transforming breath of a jesus unless the book one of the one of them has the transforming breath of a jesus and then stops there and says but if jesus is there you don't need the book so he says but then one don't need them <laughs> so it's beautiful so very nice and then he is quoting something that abu said said about number of books and number of prophets and all that so we'll keep going he continues about god speaks god speaks but again uh, i uh, repeat uh, what he god says about there. god speaks yeah uh, that is reference to 84 uh... no but that's an abu okay. said reference so i think it uh, may not be a baba reference so there is quotation yes, marks yes. there is quotation marks and abul fadl said this to a young seeker so i don't yes. think it's a baba number i think my i don't know i don't know <laughs> that's why it sounds no, like I, that yeah it sounded And like each, a baba number no each cycle of the soul uh, he refers to as a prophet left a book and each book contain one word god don't know what is the actual uh, purport that he is trying to put across hmm. let's see what the what google the god has to say about this <laughs> abul fadl no 84000 is not a obvious okay. attributed oh no is not a quote that's attributed to him abul fadl and abul fadl alami the grand miser of the mughal i don't even think we're getting the right guy how many known as this persian statesman okay so i i, I think we'll mark it if you want but i don't he's a master 
and obviously there's no notes. Okay, okay. But yeah. So let's continue. Uh, you know, before that, <laughs> this is a beautiful description of what one needs to do with God speaks. He says, "Don't waste your time to understand the infinite eternal reality, which because that is not the goal." And he says that in capital of individualized beings. In the illusion of creation, reality, he goes on, is to be realized by conscious experience. So he says, understanding is of no use. It is only through experience. And he introduces the important concept of conscious experience because that's the journey. Conscious experience of divinity is the goal. And that's what he summarizes the objective of the book to be. Excellent. So we continue. God speaks is also the first time God has used the English language to tell us something. He wanted to tell us almost like he had got tired of Sanskrit or Arabic or Hebrew and had the idea he would learn a new language. The lingo of the majority of the most dumb of the most most gross conscious of human beings that were ever upon the face of the earth who have forgotten about him the most longest and the most consist consistently and who never remember what they read because as Kumaraswamy AK pointed out, the spread of literacy is the decline of culture. We can all read, but what do we read? Someone's killed someone or would like to someone's seen something which we haven't and thinks we should know. Well, this is exactly where we are from a media standpoint, right? It's so, so painful. You, all you get is negative news. Uh, so uh, if you guys remember, this is an uh, important reference that he keeps going back to, Ananda Kumaraswamy. Ananda Kumaraswamy is, has written on many things, but his most famous book is uh, The Dance of Shiva on the Nataraja. And he brings the artistic elements and how they are connected to divinity and physics, quantum physics. Uh, I'm sure Kama might have heard of uh, Ananda Kumar Swami. He's a, he's a dude, I think, from Boston, maybe MIT or Harvard, and originally from India, obviously, with a funny spelling for, uh, or should I say, funny British influenced spelling of uh, Kumar Swami. Right? Uh, with that, let's keep going. Uh, the, again, he, yeah, Jacob, I think yeah. Karthik, you yeah. read about the God speaks thing, which yeah. he's quoting from actually uh, what he can do is if you the have dedication, God speaks with dedication. You, there is one. Two page, there's a two pager um, uh, where uh, or it's in one page right in the middle of the God speaks book which talks about this whole aspect of, uh, you know, what is God. And it also in the back cover of God Speaks, as you, you know, which is taken from the main section within God Speaks. So I think if you read that, that would be nice to add value to this particular quote that he makes, you know. Sure. As I'm getting the book, the other uh, uh, thing I noticed was he stylizes the sonnet to borrow heavily from God Speaks style. So this most, most, uh, and uh, right. first most and all of that is classic uh, uh, Baba style in uh, uh, God Speaks. So he's used that in this uh, sonnet. I'm just getting the book. Uh -huh, uh, the do you book. know? Can I read the back page? Yeah, do you know the, the para that he's talking about? Please go ahead. Uh, I am just uh, holding the book uh, and he's he referred to the back page. The back of the book, there are three paragraphs. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, paragraphs. please go ahead. Please go ahead. God cannot be explained. 
he cannot be argued about he cannot be theorized nor can he be discussed and understood god can only be lived there was a there seems to be some continuity on that uh, few dots to understand the infinite eternal reality is not the goal of individualized beings in illusion of creation because the reality can never be understood it is to be realized by the conscious experience as what we read now in the sonnet therefore the goal is to realize the reality and attain the i am god state in human form mehr baba awesome thank you so perfect uh, uh, reference to this be is read. a subset this is a subset from the you know i would prefer reading that whole page which yes. comes before the 10 states of god consciousness somewhere in there you know uh, uh, if you so read that that will kind of fulfill the whole you know this particular uh, stanza that you read so can you just give me a phrase again from this which i can just try to search i have it i have the soft copy open mama give me a phrase that i can search three words once the first section is so uh, there are two parts to god speaks the first part is the main theme and then after that you ten, will notice a, yeah 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 mama i just want three words from the uh, that portion that you read just give me okay. three words uh, together correct one phrase okay realize by conscious experience by god cannot be explained Yeah, yeah. My conscious experience is a good one. Oh, because there is a few lines in continuity that paragraph contains. God cannot be explained. You can try to search on that. Okay. Right. God cannot. Okay, search is broken. I'm not able to get it. Okay. Conscious. What is that again? No, this is the last page. Is I opened the page part ten, page number one ninety. Oh, you got it. Okay. Uh, that is conclusion. In God speaks. Okay. Correct. Okay, so I'll read it. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Eighty nine part ten conclusion. God cannot be explained. He cannot be argued about. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, yes. Yeah. God cannot be explained. He cannot be argued about. He cannot be theorized. nor can he be discussed and understood god can only be lived equivalent of experiencing nevertheless all that is said here and explained about god speaks about god to appease the intellectual convulsions of the mind of man still lacks many more words and further explanations because the truth is that the reality must be realized and the divinity of god must be attained and lived to understand the infinite eternal reality is not the goal of individualized beings in the illusion of creation because the reality can never be understood it is to be realized by conscious experience therefore the goal is to realize the reality and attain the i am god state in human form thank you thank you thank you for perfectly getting the reference and i'm glad we read it because he's basically whatever is in the green highlight is what he's saying in those two lines exactly almost were back <laughs> okay
Yeah. By the way, Kama, do you know Anand? Uh, have you read that book, uh, A.K. Kum- A. Kumaraswamy? You're the quantum physics dude. No, no response. Let, let's keep going. Someone's invented a new gadget or a new form of budget or a different set smelling soap or a new cereal or the improved scope of a radio aerial or the odds of horses or some social behavior courses or other kinds of anusual belching that keeps our feet squelching in the veil of mud across heart word and response and the soul dancing a jig or a rock and roll nuzzling a carrot suspended from the point of a bayonet so very interesting imagery uh, we'll just probably look up this one word Anusio, Anusio Dictionary. It's not there. No results. Thank you very much. So we'll let that pass, but uh, it's it's obviously he's saying that we get carried away by messages and messages which are pretty dumb and not very uh, relevant, not very profound or important. And he gives examples of all those silly things that excite us, like a carrot, a carrot at the point of a bayonet. A bayonet is a gun. And at the end of the gun, you have a carrot and we are chasing the carrot unaware that it's actually held at the tip of the bayonet. So it's this classical visualization of uh, carrot and stick policy with a carrot and a gun. So that's what he's trying to do here. English, a developed language. So, by the way, the big point he made two sonnets about is the fact that the avatar chose English, English as the lingua franca of the majority of the population and God speaks is written in it. English, a developed language, Milton, we are told, made it resonate. But why did he have to stand on his head to do it? Milton blind and Homer all seeing. No one seems to have mentioned that resonance is a quality of the heart. When Vivekananda got up in Chicago and merely pronounced the word brothers. Half the assembly got up their hind legs and cheered. Vivek knew the blank paper scriptures by heart. In fact, his heart was painted with whiteness. His heart encompassed brotherhood. Brother was he in true sonship of his guru. So, When the particular of this general light condition occurred on his tongue and he said, brothers, the resonance reverberated in the souls of his audience and their souls remembered their natural posture of verticality and they stood up. Very, very nice way of describing the Chicago speech. So he's first making the point of uh, Um, uh, us, rather uh, Milton, struggling to get his message across because it's not coming from the heart. So he says, Milton is blind. Why does he have to stand on his head to do anything, right? Milton is a poet. And on the other hand, he says, Homer, we know he loves Homer. So Homer is all seeing, he says. And then he goes on to explain more about this incident which happened uh, in the uh, in in Vivekananda's lecture in the what was it the conference of religions or 
uh, whatever the big uh, event that he attended in Chicago, and he started his uh, speech, his seminal speech, uh, with the uh, words "brothers and sisters," and he says that came from the heart, and that reminded all of these other audience that was sitting to actually stand up. And there he uses another God speaks uh, ideal idea, which is, uh, um, you know, we are actually in a journey to stand up as vertebrates. And, and uh, you know, the uh, sequence, right? Stone, we are in sleeping forms and we uh, stand up in some uh, kingdoms and then we come to the last uh, pose which is uh, uh, standing up in, in, in the human form. And that's the form uh, and which is in the likeness of God himself, right? So he says, when the word brothers came from the heart of the mouth of uh, Vivekananda, everybody connected instantly and went back to the posture of verticality and stood up. So it's very interesting, very nice uh, uh, poetic uh, expression. So we'll just see if there is something on the notes because we are on 110. Yeah, so he's talked about blank paper scripture. In the delightful Chinese novel Monkey, translated by Arthur Valley, Allen and Unwin, Tripitaka arrives after a most hazardous and adventurous journey at the monast monastery and is given a scroll of the true scripture. When he opens it, he finds it only as a blank paper. Upon his complaint about this, he is told that is the true scripture, but he wants some with writing, he can have those two. So that he has combined with uh, uh, the concept of uh, the speech, uh, I mean, the speech at uh, uh, Chicago. So Vivek, he uses a pet name or a short name. Vivek knew the blank paper scriptures by heart, in fact, his heart was painted with whiteness, he says. Continue. No doubt, as Shankaracharya pointed out, all songs are to Brahman, God. So uh, it could be. Yeah. Like, right. uh, this blank paper script, uh, can mm -hmm. we sort of link it to the uh, silence that Baba talks of? Silence that Baba talks of. Uh, yeah, yes, that's yes. a good uh, analogy. Yeah, but it, the, the Baba so each silence. one has to read it and uh, say internalize it. So it cannot be talked about or written about. Yeah. So it is, that's why silence is most important. Correct. The most loud whispers of Baba's silence. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so that's a good connection. I continue. No doubt, as Shankaracharya pointed out, all songs are to Brahman, God. So it could be asserted that all expression is art. He comes back to his favorite theme. But some songs are the long way round, the round of the rounds of a few million, perhaps more births. And some are a flight direct to the heart of God. Just as all men are drunk, some with the world, some with love for God. Which is the just, which is just the difference between your caged crooner and mud painter and violent poet and a Mirabai or Sappho or Chakti Baba. Gurnika is parochial. Siva Bhairav at Kailas Universal, Gurnika, the rage of a man against conditions imposed by others. Kailas, the destruction of self-imposed obstacles to self. Gurnika, an expression of barbarism destroying itself. Kailash, the expression of civilization continually renewing itself. Gurnika is reflection. Kailas is a statement. Any guesses on uh, what uh, Gurnika and Kailas are here? I think we encountered them earlier. Kailas is again a pet theme of uh, uh, Francis's. So 
Kailash is actually a reference here to Elora, right? The frescoes at Elora. We we'll just check if Guernica is uh, Guernica is a painting on the wall, but let me check. Is a large oil painting. Yeah, it's one of his best works. It's about war, I think. Let's check it out. <clears throat> so it's Picasso, oil painting, it's exhibit gray, black, um, violence, and chaos. Yeah. The gray, black, and white painting, which is 3.49 meters, portrays the suffering wrought by violence and chaos. So uh, prominent in the composition are a gold horse, a bull screaming, women, a dead baby, a dismembered soldier, and flames. So that's, I think, uh, Picasso's art. And that he's co contrasting with Elora, Elora's frescoes. Right? And is there a note about this topic? Yeah, a large painting by Picasso depicting the destruction of a world. Shiva Bhairav, a representation in the temple of Kailas at Elora of Shiva's destroyer. Apart from the contrast of these two works in isolation, the difference is even more marked in context. Guernica in the context of Picasso's body of work and the Bhairav in the context of the whole series of sculpture depicting the life story of Shiva. So I think I just needed to have gone to the notes. Anyway, let's go. Um, that's page 110. We go to the 11th sonnet. Art is an act of love, an imperishable statement, cut in stone, uttered in tones and words, or through the movements of the dancer, and thus impressioned in the material of mind. Continually contemporary and continually accessible to one who loves. As act, self sufficient. Useless for thy works of progress, O man. A statement, revealment of the body of the beauty of God and proof of his eternal existence. When David or Tukaram danced before God, a harmony of movement was impressed on the minds of people who didn't even see the dance. When Solomon or Namdev sang, Music was entering into people's lives. When Enoch walked with God, walking was again beautiful. When the friends of God talked with him, speech became lovely. When Muhammad offered his five prayers, the hearts of men listened and inclined toward prayer. So everything that's done with the heart is continuously accessible and continually contemporary. So he's saying it's timeless art that comes from the heart and is having God as its object is continually contemporary, right? And he he says that when it's done correctly, it imp what impresses is the harmony of movement was impressed on the minds of people who didn't even see the dance. Right. So it's it's a it's a art is a presentation where, you know, you connect it directly with the uh, the theme and the intent of the artist. And then he uses the word impression twice here. Uh, he says an imperishable statement cut in stone, uttered in tones and words or through the movements of the dancer and thus impression in the material of mind. So it uh, we know the. Uh, the mind is the repository of impressions. So he says impression in the material of mind is the statement of art. Right. So that's something to think about. Is there more five? Enoch is an Old Testament master. Solomon, um, uh, David and Solomon. David also is an Old Testament master. Solomon, an Old Testament master, Namdev, a Maharashtrian poet, saint. Five prayers is the reference for the five prayers, but we'll just read it. Muhammad was asked by the people how often they should pray. Uh, Muhammad referred the matter to God, who answered continuously. The people said, doesn't he know that we have work to do or something like that? 
God brought it down to 40 times a day. Nothing doing, they said. There wouldn't be enough time left between prayers to scramble a living. It was reduced to 10, to 5, but they still complained. Below 5, God would not come. So five times a day, it is for all Muslims and Mohammedans. So that is where it is. So I don't know if there is a reference or meaning which is different from Muslims and Mohammedans, but obviously I've never given it a thought. Mohammedans are probably those who give a lot more importance to the, the prophecy and uh, uh, prophethood of uh, Muhammad and uh, 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 Muslims are probably less. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't know. But I am reminded of what we read yesterday, what uh, I heard yesterday from your reading, which is the perfect master has a bigger role, right? So he's, he gives pride of position to the perfect master even over, over the formless God because only through the help and guidance and the push of a perfect master, can you reach God? He says, Muhammad is bigger than Allah. So in a, in a, in a provocative statement, uh, Francis says that, right? So anyway, but you have to understand it and understand that in the context of what he's trying to say, he says, uh, the formless God can never be reached without the help of this prophet. And hence the prophet is more important because that's how these individual individualized souls get to experiencing God. Okay, let me continue. The sun is every day renewing the world of nature and men. Even though you shut yourself in a room, sun is in the food you eat and in the fire or radiator by which you try to melt your bones. Avatar is every day renewing men's hearts, even though they encase them in concrete and steel. If anyone denied the existence of the sun, he would be thought crazy. Yet denial of the one who sustains the heart, motivator of thought and organ of insight, is considered normal and scientific. Science, which rejects reasoning, is divorced from science. Art, which takes no account of intuition, has become separated from art. Come, an end to equivocation and mud puddling, and accept the advice of Canute's counselors. You have not yet harnessed the ocean or God's breath, not even yet measured the spots on the physical sun. This is a telling. This is a telling sonnet on how science and art are not what they should be. Art should be a lot more reliant and using intuition. And science should give a lot more respect to reasoning and be open to newer ways of understanding uh, uh, science. So science which rejects reasoning is divorced from science, he says. And he gives an example. He says, you've not even measured the spots on the physical sun as, as, uh, uh, as humans with a lot of modernity and uh, research mindedness. And on the one hand, and on one hand, you have Ezra Pound with knowledge of many languages, confused and disappointed because all of truth cannot be contained in any one language. And on the other, Bullah Shah with the powers of God arising out of mastery of a single letter. On one hand, Basudev confusing the issue with learned commentary and on the other, divine Chaitanya, scholar also using the text as a runway to take his listeners towards truth. Words, words but the name of God given to the eager and pure disciple by the precious Guru is the key which unlocks the doors of words, shut fast on the printed page. The name is the living breath of truth 
which blows where so it will and can unlock even the doors of heart. So again, a very beautiful expression. And he beats up uh, books uh, here. So he says, words, words, but the name of God given to eager and pure disciple by the precious guru is the key which unlocks the doors of words, which otherwise are shut fast on the printed page. Very nice. Okay, so there was notes on uh, Pound. Ezra Pound, the greatest writer in English in this century. The only pity is that he hasn't written in English more. What does that mean? We did in notes to uh, notes. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like he's a linguist because that's how he's described. Ezra Pound. Ezra Weston Loomis Pound. Da, 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 American poet and critic, modernist poetry, anger, da, 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 Suri, he moved to Italy, and if occurred it, I can actually go from, okay, so I don't know why Pound appears here. Early education. Okay. Uh, then you have Bulla Shah, the other reference. Um, as a child, he was very backward. By the time the other children had mastered the Arabic alphabet, he hadn't learned the first letter. Anybody, what's the first letter in Arabic? It's Alif. Sanjay would know. His parents took him away from school and left him to himself, he ran away to the desert or jungle or whatever sort of country it was, it was out of from the town and spent his whole time in trying to understand the meaning of this single letter A. In Arabic, it is Alif and it also means, uh, stands for the number one. After 25 years, he returned to his childhood school and took his place in the class he had left. The same teacher, an old man now, asked him what he wanted. He said he has come for his second lesson. To humor this mm -hmm. madman, the teacher asked him to write his first lesson on the blackboard. He did so, and the whole wall split in two. So obviously he was right up there. Mullah Shah was right up there. So I think the next letter is actually Bay. Alif, De, Te, and so on. I don't know. I think I'm not sure. Okay, anyway, so let's continue. He continues with the uh, pounding pound. So let's listen to him pounding pound. Because, Mr. Pound, you don't need 10 languages to say it. Any one babble tongue will do so long as one has thoroughly learned the word turning and has turned, which is repented and is facing in the direction and has said, give me a word by which I may know words. Aha, this is the very and entirely bones and soul of the matter of poetry. The turning and unlearning and returning and the mind cheerful and high hoped and open. Dwelling upon the heart's tone, which is the voice of the word in a man, which was how Valmiki received the Ramayana. And Homer said, tell me, O virgin of God, thou pure brightness, thou pure brightness, tell me the words of my speaking. For of our, ourselves we hear only rumors and know nothing. And thus, every poet who is an answer to his own prayer. So a successful or a true poet always starts with a prayer. And what he puts down in poetry is actually received from God. 
like he says valmiki received the ramayana and homer got everything with a response to the question asking asking for uh, what am i supposed to be saying so that's beautiful and tukaram after he was cooled in daily conversation with krishna starts writing verses at krishna's behest for god loves poets who can rightly sing his praises a poet is a swift arrow of light in the darkness at fat necks supporting pin headed thinking unless your neck become becomes as thin as a hair an idle glorious one bane of progress of production lines and bitumen boiled with the sweat of breath which should be savored sacrifice to god i labor my point certainly labors are little hammers and hammers hand or jack is the only way of breaking stone not that baba won't do it with a single word but if we had already lost our ears in fine poetry and our eyes in love glancing we would have some accommodation for baba's word of breaking so we have learned, we have lost the capacity to hear we have lost the capacity to appreciate uh, uh uh love glancing is the phrase he uses and hence we are not even ready for baba's breaking of the silence with the word right so that's the reference here but this is not a denial of learning a man of learning and whose heart is open can bring others to his own station whereas a man of heart alone enjoys sight of god but a man of learning the gate of whose heart is shut so that god has not come into it and reshapen it and well pleased taken his seat there and receives the man's love a man in whom the vivifying breath of a jesus or tilopa has not moved has not moved is a, is a designer in wind blown sand a winnower of straw shaft he calls that which is passing real and asserts that the real is false a destroyer of culture and a betrayer of lovely art a bubble mouth man bubble slobber of hail on the green shoots of young intellect so any thoughts on uh, this is going on uh, uh, on explaining how true art and true poetry should be right and how it it is in today's world right uh, this first line of what you are showing read mm-hmm. that and make out can we uh, the man of heart may... alone enjoys sight of god but helps uh, no but one helps no one does it refer to a mazu yeah yes or or a seventh plane or a right yes. enjoys the sight of god but helps no one but a man of learning the gate of whose heart is shut so that god has not come into it and reshapen it and well placed taken his seat there and receives the man's love a man in whom the vivifying breath of jesus or tilopa has not moved so anybody who's learning or learned in the traditional sense but without god in it is what he's saying is useless right yes. yeah Let's quickly see if there's any notes on one twelve. There's none. Ullah Shah is the last. So on. Let's go to seventeen. On the one hand, the man unspeakably glorious, and on the other, the woman unnameably beautiful. Sometimes a disciple said, "When I repeat the name, I feel the qualities of the moon. I become the moon." an experience bliss sometimes when i repeat the name i feel the qualities of the sun i become the sun and overpowered fall senseless to the ground moon gleam and sun 
beat. Artemis's gentle arrows and the rivers and words of enchantment. The sun god's brazen arrows wounding the mouth of the parched earth and it's still calling. How long is the path to God's feet? Rain, rain, the healing of gentle rain. He goes back to his uh, pet theme, the pet theme of sunbeat and moonbeam, right? What, uh, uh, what he's referring here is uh, how a disciple can experience uh, the moon qualities of God, and also the sun qualities of God. Sun qualities are overpowered and I fall senseless to the ground. Moon qualities help me experience bliss. Now, there are multiple ways of understanding the sun-moon analogy. And I, I think we've been through this. Uh, one is the Jalali Jamali. And within the Jalali Jamali specifically, sun is the one that in, in that harshness, exposes humans to suffering and puts, uh, uh, but also at the same time is the nourisher because without the sun, you cannot uh, have growth of all the uh, vegetation and the, uh, uh, it's, it's the nourisher and the sustainer. But the moon is the illusory aspect that gives you a false sense of uh, experiences and happiness and uh, joy and so on and so forth, right? So that's moon gleam and sun beat. Right, so that's what I get out of this. A human being, a divine man, taking who as of God and deriving man from manas, mind. A human being, that final vehicle with spirit molded, with care and loving eagerness and informed, which the angels were commanded by God to worship but which Iblis hated and ever since have the devil's descendants, hated it and conditioned it and twisted it to serve their purposes. A human being labored towards through the endless ages of evolution, a man and a woman blueprinted in paradise, Eden, fitted together precisely and realized in actuality after the exile and immeasurable wandering in the perfect saints, but perfectly completed in the men God, the perfect masters, and in the God man avatar. So the whole journey of what happens after you get to the human form and what it means is covered in this sonnet. And he actually plays with the word human to start with. Hugh is nothing but of God, he says. And man is derived from manas. So who, God and mind is that it is made up of those two aspects of the word. And it's that final vehicle which the angels were commanded by God to worship. Worship what? Worship the human form. But which Iblis hated. Iblis is a uh, Abrahamic, I mean, not Abrahamic, I should say, Muslim uh, or Islamic character who, um, who's the one that plays a similar role to uh, what the snake did in, in uh, uh, Adam and Eve. So he created the temptation, I think, if I'm right. And he's a representation of uh, Satan. But let's look him up. Look up everybody real time. Oops. <laughs> but spell them right. Uh, alternative leader of the devils. Yeah, it's Islamic mythology and he's the leader of the devils. Uh, regarding the original of no, the first version, and this was cast down. Uh, some Sufi Muslims, let's read about that. Some Sufi Muslims hold a more ambivalent role for Iblis, considering him not simply as the devil, but also as the true monotheist, while preserving the ter term shaitan exclusively for evil forces. So, uh, so 
Iblis is seen in a more tolerant, tolerated manner by the Sufis, but Iblis is almost equated to Shaitan in the uh, uh, traditional Islam. So that's what I take away from that. Okay, and then he says, then the man uh, uh, blueprinted together uh, is a man and a woman in the paradise called Eden. And then they go through and get perfected over and over again, become men God, and then finally the God man avatar as well. So that's all the possibilities that are there in the human form. That's the point he's making. A human being, that's an interesting word. It's got to do with a man acting something like God. Some don't. Must be something to do with evolution. People don't get rid of it all. That's why you get, get some acting as a mean, as a snake or as cunning, cunning as a dingo or as randy as a bull. I knew a man once couldn't look at any woman without wanting to go at her. But I saw one woman handle him. Just looked at him and he changed color and gave a kind of a snort like a bull. What, what was suffocating and made off. I said to her, that's a pretty powerful sort of a look, miss. Yes, she says. I call it my mirror look. They get their horns tangled up in it and don't like what they look like. So um, he plays about the word of uh, human being and then also uh, he talks about uh, uh, an example, a woman uh, handling a person who was not of the best uh, examples of human beings who was always trying to uh, be pursuing women for uh, uh, reasons of flesh and that lady gives him a look and she explains the look at as as being something where she shows the mirror to them and that scares them and they run away As with most popular notions, the notion that travel is broadening the rivers is true. It ties ever more tightly the knots in the net of the senses. It causes one to see many things and remember few, to make many acquaintances and few friends. It leads the imagination on to tomorrow and prevents mind dwelling on the moment of today. It scatters affection and prevents love from manifesting. It makes meditation difficult and prayer impossible. The ideal man is one who has never beyond, who's never been beyond the boundaries of his own district, who accept that he must eat or to visit his friends, hardly leaves his house who welcomes the world as a visitor and after a little while conducts it courteously to the door. The very ideal man is a Bulla Shah, unlettered save for one letter, unminded save for one object before his mind's eye. Interesting comment. I think this comment is for me and Kama, the eternal mm. travelers. The eternal okay. travelers, we keep traveling all the time. So he says, there's no nothing in travel. Don't waste your time. If you can't <laughs> stay in your own house, then the problem is with you. <laughs> right? <laughs> As with most popular notions, the notion that travel is broadening is wrong. <laughs> so, come no. on, stop traveling. <laughs> no, travel inside. Don't exactly. travel outside. Realize the true journey. Focus on the true journey. And the last uh, few lines of this, uh, uh, Bulla Shah. What is Bulla Shah? The same guy who learned only one letter and then came and broke his classroom's wall and he tried to write it. So he's uh -huh. probably a, a saint. 
Yeah, Bulla Shah was also a poet. He has written mm-hmm. a lot of poetry in Punjabi. So in Punjabi folk and even Sufi Kavalis, which are in Punjabi, they use a lot of uh, couplets, which are uh, said by Bulla Shah. Written by? Oh, Bulla Shah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And his, uh, his tomb is also there in uh, Pakistan, where, which is a place of pilgrimage for many people, actually. I saw one uh, documentary on TV. Uh, so. Beshak Mandir. Okay. You know, you remember that song with Roti Kapada Makan came, you know, first time we got to hear of Bulle Shah. Ro- Beshak Mandir Masjid Todo, Par Dil Na Todo, Bulle Shah Ye Kanda. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chanchal Singh. Yeah, Chanchal Singh was a singer. So that mm-hmm. was the opening line. Yeah, that song. Ah. It's very popular in Punjabi music. Punjabi music, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Super. Thanks for that reference. But then he's saying unlettered, save for one letter, because of what we read, right? The the first letter he learned, and then he did not, and he came back after twenty five years, the teacher. Anyway, let's continue. And the problem of children, because we have despised the saints and ridiculed the ways of art and heeded not the successive word of brightness. When words no longer have value, when a man's word is given lightly and love is barter and art dressed in warden and mocked and the eye does not look straightly and the mouth drops filth and convulses before the gentle word brother, and ear is denied solitary listening, and is sold into wardom for lust of advertising and propaganda. The children have no one to whom they can turn, no one whom they can trust, secureless, homeless, and parentless, and wandering they become. So it's an indictment of indictment of parenting beautiful. yeah beautiful way beautiful well the way the world is advertising and whoredom and the yeah. mouth of filth you know on the new serials that you listen the kind of language they use you know yeah <laughs> the ott platform what is being shown really yeah. sad really sad right yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, if if we could survive uh, literally since uh, till till 10 years back without having to use cuss words in uh, serials yes yes and and you come today literally everything that has to represent something cool or have humor has to have language <laughs> right, right right i mean these so, words were always there but now they are so they are in your uh, drawing room and bedroom everywhere actually so Yes. yes. <laughs> not yes. that they were not there, but they were very limited. Yeah. Correct. That's what listening and this hold. <laughs> yeah. And it is the undisciplined parent, the parent who loves not pupilship, says to the child, don't. And in the word don't, the child hears. Continue in what you are doing because in the undisciplined parent's word is the injunction to ignore it. And it is that the undisciplined government comprising men who love not learning and have not acquainted themselves with the divine truths, nor sought to model themselves in the image of art. It is that when they make a law, Contained in that law is the command to break it. And it is that because of these things, this age is an avataric age. A time when we, man, have sunk to a low level of living and being, when the limit of the violation of the divine in man and the human of God has been reached. And only by fully and perfect descent of himself as a man can he re-establish the way of virtue, the way of pupilship and love and delight of humanness in men. So this sonnet talks about how parenting and laws work and how 
in the law or in that instruction lies the way to break it, which is something we can relate to as parents and children. And then he goes on as this degradation and degeneration peaks. That's the time for the avatar to come down. The perfect descent of himself, he says. 23. Little streams run towards big streams and the rivers lose themselves into the ocean. But the streamlets of God, the little children, have no one to bear them to the divine ocean of their origin. They spill over on bitumen and concrete in small escaped floods. Ghost talk in school rooms. Male voice, female voice talking ghost talk. What will we tell the little children? Tell them about animals that frisk on the earth. There are pictures of them in the picture books. Ghost pictures. Little lamb, little lamb. Lamb chops for breakfast too. Outside sun in the sky. Get up, teacher, and organize some games. They have forgotten playway. You must show them how. Bring them inside again. Let the lady voice and the gentleman voice tell them about Red Indians or Aborigines. No stories of King Arthur or King Rama and valor and gentleness and courtesy. No poems of desperate lovers, no little preludes of John Sebastian Bach. So this is an indictment of education, of how education is broken. And he says, what we should focus on, we are not focusing on. We're not focusing on King Rama. We're not focusing on on the right things and in, on uh, and and we focus on desperate lovers and preludes of John Sebastian Bach. I think Bach is a reference to the musician, but there was Bach was one of the greatest European music masters, but also seems to have been an ideal teacher of children and wrote a quantity of graded pieces beginning with LP for them. What is LP? Oh, little, yeah. little preludes. <laughs> That's the book. I think you need notes for Francis's notes. So this is a mm. book that he has written, and but he is more a musician. But he has been an ideal teacher of children, and uh, he has written a quantity of graded pieces beginning with LP for them. So this is literally, I think, his handwritten notes that have just got transcribed and printed which could be a struggle for many like me. <laughs> yeah, basically uh, the moral education being uh, taken out of the syllabus. Broken, broken, yeah. yeah. It's not yes, there. Yes. Yeah. True, that's what he's talking about. So, so you speak Sonic. of one moral uh, chapter in the textbook and all the lepsis uh, start howling on that. Yeah. So, it would be interesting to read uh, Baba's message, message, which he gave uh, on the 100th anniversary of the school that he studied. So there he said, uh, what should be the education? I'll, I'll dig it out somewhere. Sure. Okay. The, uh, school the, school where he studied. the Christian school. Yeah, the Christian school yeah, that yeah. he studied in. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes, yeah. yes. Great. That would be nice. So, yeah, he, he was invited for 100th anniversary of that school. I think it was in 1967. Oh, and then, okay. But not go, but he had sent a message. Sent a message. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. Look forward to getting that. And I also try finding it if I find the time. Sure. 24, sonnet number 24. Jesus, if only someone would make some nice music. Music? ought to start somewhere with a man's heart and come out and surprise him with a sort of delight, like rain you after delight. a long dry spell. What is that? You will delight. No, no, I think it's all expressions uh, which are colloquial. Collo colloquial. I think he's trying to say, I'm with a sort of delight. Off, for off, oh. he's using the 
Australian okay. whatever. And sought and with a sort of delight, like rain after a long dry spell, or like a bloody lovely moon coming out the ocean. It ought to make a man feel like shouting like those chaps did when the morning stars sang together. Morning stars, that's poetry. Jesus, if only some chap would write a bit of poetry or some living or some music which would sound like that so that the living Christ himself would nod his head in approval. I'm correcting and reading the way it will make yes, sense yes. for us. Jesus, I bet even the bloody cows would dance and the bloody dingoes nibble grass alongside the sheep. Even men might stop cutting little lambs' throats and eating them. If only some, if only someone made some real good music, music as lovely as well. <coughs> I think dingo is a pastoral animal in Australia, but we'll just look it up. This is the second time. Yeah, dingo is an ancient lineage, lineage of dog found in uh, Australia. This is the second time Dingo came uh, in this part, if you recollect. Uh, he was talking about randy bulls and dingoes. Dingoes are basically dogs. Okay. And dingoes, he says, are eating grass? Yeah, they are nibbling grass. I bet even the bloody cows would dance and the bloody dingoes nibble grass alongside the ship, uh, alongside the sheep, if there was good music, right? So he says, nobody is making good music. Sanjay ji, aapko gana padega. Music, good music. <laughs> From the heart. So, 25. Christ of a calculation for a scientist that purely by mathematics he adjudged this an avataric period and that Lord Baba had again come into the world and the exact place where he could be found. Christ of a theme for a fugue in 12 parts the disciples and their heavenly course around him, their service and adoration. But it seems that shepherds once had more moose than intellectuals have now. The world, world is a vaudeville show, item, demonstration of the exact effect of radiation on human tissue. Item, demonstration how of how exactly a satellite world will be able to control the earth item demonstration of the reaction of a monkey's nerves to our most recent music the next item he says will be a little song numbered by the avatar so christ of a theme for a fuge in 12 parts any Ideas on what that is? Is 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 that a biblical reference? Anyway, oh, what yes. will show what will show is uh, is is a reference to theater, which is uh, targeting what what will is basically um, low end. I mean, we'll look it up so that I don't mislead you guys. What the farce with music? Can there is a it's a light entertainment popular from the mid 1890s. It's not very well respected. That consists of 10 to 15 individual unrelated acts. So it's a cheap form of entertainment, right? What will is cheap form entertainment. So uh, word world will is uh, derived from old French term, which is a reference to the Wire Valley where the songs originated. Variety shows, music, comedy, whatever. Very cheap, low end. It's not like theater that the refined people go to. Right? So he's comparing it, comparing uh, what will to exact effect of radiation on human tissue. It just kills. And he says, uh, demonstration of how exactly a satellite world will be able to control the earth. Demonstration of the reaction of a monkey's nerves to our most recent music. And then finally, he says, the next art will be a song number by Avatar. 26, ideograms draw a circle, all equal to also sun equal to concentration of divine light. Pull yourself together, old man, 
avatar who shines equally on saint and sinner and from whom came the sun and stars and air and fire and water and the lovely earth life of all things in the earth and of men and women the avikna the lovely one draw five lines coming out of the circle one up one each side two down and you have a man evolution's end and possibility of self knowing draw lines radially wheel bondage in rebirth sun beside wheel man found by a perfect master involution taking the path back to god wow it's a nice sonnet he's just mm -hmm. using very very simple geometric shapes and ideas to convey a lot of profound things he starts with a circle and he says circle with five there are a few more lines to that the sonnet is not over thank you draw a pot yeah yeah draw a pot any sort of pot any sort of a man or woman with heart put two wheels to it heart moving in balance a well wrought vase instead of any old pot a mature man or woman attach wings to it a saint wings and a spout flying and pouring perfect saint one who is with god and helps people <laughs> so it's just visualizations so he starts with the yes, sun yes. a circle with five uh, lines uh, like a human and then he goes on to represent the wheel to represent rebirth and the sun with the wheel next to it is how the perfect master helps you get away from the cycle of births and deaths and get vindicated i mean get uh, uh, liberated and then he talks of a pot something like a kettle it has wings and it has a spout so it's flying it's soaring into the skies but it's also pouring so that's to say perfect master and that reminds me my green tea has not arrived so that's a good reminder that <laughs> my tea is overdue and also we are almost out of time so how many more yeah so we'll stop at 26 then uh and continue from here any other points before we wrap up no the way he puts up uh, this uh, evolution to involution in so many different imageries is quite uh, very very nice each uh, time there is a new idea coming up uh, sure right here it starts with the pot uh, mud pot once again becomes earth and the pot next time and all that It's repeated yeah. birth and uh, death yeah <clears throat> so and then back day today is... i hope everybody finishes monday and stuff like taxes don't for, don't forget <laughs> to finish your taxes and this time modi is not giving you an extension so <laughs> finish it on time finished good okay okay uh if there's nothing else uh, we can wrap up uh, any closing remarks nothing um, jai baba nan <laughs> jai baba okay jai, jai baba. baba have a, have jai a baba. great sunday and a great week ahead uh, let's catch up uh, uh next week yeah avatar meher baba ki jai baba ki jai jai bye